Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So today we're going to be returning to the discourse relating to Star Wars The Acolyte. We're going to talk about not only the continued failure of the series, but also the continued coping and seething from fans who are claiming that this show was doomed from the start. However, unlike their reasons that they claim makes this show doomed from the start, like the result of haters and bigots, trolls and review bombers, this show is doomed from the start because of its own creators, because of bad writing and retcons that look so ridiculous they mirror South Park parodies. And also the fact that the lead actress came out and released a diss track on her own fans while there were still episodes left to air. So nobody was surprised when a week and a half ago it was announced that Star Wars The Acolyte was canceled after only one season. In fact, things are looking so rough that fans are worried that The Acolyte may be deleted entirely for a Disney tax write-off likely to counter the tens of millions of dollars they lost as a result of this project. Now, since then, we have gotten a big update. The star of the acolyte, Amanda Stenberg, has come out in an eight and a half minute long rambling session where she reveals the reason she believes the acolyte was canceled. No, it has nothing to do with low viewership. No, it doesn't have anything to do with bad writing or bad creative decisions from the directors. No, it has nothing to do with the performances of the actors or their actions on social media. All of the fault lays with one party, and that is the bigoted alt-right trolls who attack this series and its actors. Yes, as you can see, there is no accountability, and that's not too surprising. Now, before we get into her statements in this video, let's kind of set the scene of what's happened over the past week and a half, especially among the fans of The Acolyte. We have seen them go through the various stages of grieving, beginning with posts like this. Let me just read this for you. I broke down crying about The Acolyte tonight. I've been grieving privately for days, and I needed to let it all out. This show means more to me than words can say. I made It made me feel seen as a female Star Wars fan and as a woman who is taught by society to hide her rage. Now, this is, th th this is over the top, okay? I'm not trying to dunk on this person. I just genuinely think when you're making a post grieving about a show in a similar manner you would grieve about a beloved family member, that's too much. This is an unhealthy attachment to a show and whatever agenda is attached to it. On top of that, we would see kind of the, the hopium arc in the, the grieving stage, where you would see a lot of people come forward and say, you know, hashtag, there are more of us. Let's save the acolyte. Come on, guys, we all love this show. Let's unite and try to make a push to get this renewed for a second season. Now, this is very similar to a movement from months ago, where a lot of content creators and social media influencers made a video compilation of all of them saying, there are more of us. And basically the message was that all of the critics of the Acolyte are just a small minority who aren't even Star Wars fans. They instead claim that Star Wars fans love the Acolyte and that it's succeeding and that will be proven in the numbers and the support that the show receives. Of course, we now know that is a joke because the show has been canceled after one season. And on top of that, this video has been long since deleted. I think they've done a better job burying this on the internet than they have with leaked classified documents. Like, you can't find this anywhere unless someone is making fun of it. But anyways, that sort of narrative about there are more of us is once again dunked on by these results right here. So this petition has been out since the 20th, so about a week and a half at this point. And you can see the number of signatures for this petition trying to renew the Acolyte. That number right there, 50,000, is really, really bad. I want to stress upon you how bad that is. So to give you an example, the petition for the Hoyo, Hoyoverse boycott has over double that number of signatures. A group of teenagers with an average of 50 mental illnesses in their bio who can't even stop playing the games they are boycotting were able to mobilize more effectively than Acolyte fans. That is really embarrassing. On top of that, a lot of people look at these signatures and they say, well, where were you when the show was airing? Why didn't you watch? But I even counter that by saying, even if you have 50,000 legitimately interested people, I don't think that's anywhere near enough. This is a show that had a $180 million budget of which they lost a lot of money on for this first season. Now they need likely another round of a hundred plus million dollar budget for the next season. 50,000 interested people for an IP like this is horrible. 
If this had millions of signatures, maybe we're talking. But then again, why didn't they show up for the, the, the original first season when it was airing? Why would they start showing interest now? At the end of the day, petitions like this are really bad optics for anyone trying to push the narrative that a second season is wanted and would be successful. And in the wake of this reality, right, the fact they didn't get enough viewership, the fact that people just simply didn't tune in, a lot of fans of the Acolyte are trying to cope and seethe and basically blame all of this on these boogeymen like the Dude Bros or the Incels who apparently are responsible somehow for getting this second season canceled before it even began. And a lot of people have countered with claims and memes like this where the narrative while the Acolyte was premiering was that basically, oh, uh, the fans of the Acolyte were saying if you don't like this, then you don't have to watch it, you bigot. Labeling anyone who's a critic or anyone who doesn't want to watch it as a bigot. And then people just didn't watch it. And now those people making those crazy claims about the critics of the show are now turning around and saying, well, how did, how did this get canceled? And also, it, it's still your fault, bigoted Star Wars fans. And of course, uh, you can see responses like this to that previous post that really sum up what we're talking about here. This person said, no. It was you toxic clowns review bombing it that casual viewers stayed away. And don't tell me that didn't happen because you dumb Fs review bombed the wrong acolyte too. You see inclusion and little smooth brains start to spark and you lose your stuff. Uh, sir, this is a Wendy's first of all. And second of all, again, you see this blame being placed on review bombing. I will tell you this, the audience score for the acolyte is meaningless when it comes to the the decision to give it a second season or not just look at the product itself and how bad it was clearly they don't care about what the audience thinks or what they want and on top of that it could have had a one percent audience score but if it got the viewership it needed and if it got a profitable amount of attention it would have gotten a second season that is how business works they don't care about audience scores if it's not reflected in the viewership but anyways, we now get to the long-awaited portion of this video where Amanda Stenberg, the uh, main actress behind The Acolyte, has come out and shared her frustrations with this whole situation and how she wasn't shocked that The Acolyte was canceled after one season and she knew the reason why. Like I said, it wasn't the low viewership, it wasn't the creative decision, it wasn't the performances, it was bigotry. Our show, our Star Wars show has been canceled. For those who aren't aware, there has been uh, a rampage of vitriol that we have faced since the show was even announced, when it was still just a concept and when no one had even seen it. Uh, and that's when we started experiencing a rampage of, um, I would say, hyper-conservative uh, bigotry and vitriol, prejudiced hatred and hateful language towards us. And I just want to let those people know out there who supported us in that way um, and supported us vocally despite and in the face of all of the vitriol that we received and the kind of the targeted attack, I would say, we received by the alt-right, um, just that you were deeply loved and <laughs> appreciated. So you can see the total deflection of blame. Eight and a half minutes of coping and seething and trying to blame everything on bigoted alt-right trolls. Because apparently if they don't like a show, that means it's going to get canceled. Not the fact that people didn't tune in, not the fact that it was a bad product. It had everything to do with these boogeymen that these people like Amanda and other Acolyte fans are blaming for the cancellation of the show. And it really goes hand in hand with a lot of the things we've been seeing from fans, right? She's playing right into their narrative, blaming this on bigots and all those things, when in reality, it just didn't get the viewership it needed for a second season. And on top of that, this is a personal pet peeve. Feel free to disagree. Maybe I'm just crazy here. But uh, the fact that she was doing this while fixing her hair just really shows how unserious she is, right? You make a eight plus minute post addressing your fans and the cancellation of the show where you were the lead actress and you can't even just take eight minutes to look into the camera and talk without doing a different task. Like some people will say, well, oh, that's normal on TikTok. Like people want to try to, uh, you know, multitask while they're making videos. Like, but I think this is a little more serious. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe you could have taken the time, but then again, Maybe that's just my personal opinion. But anyways, 
a lot of people are looking at this and saying, well, I guess, Amanda, you can't drop another diss track because I believe that was really the epitome of this show, right? And how she really hated her own fans. And she labeled the targets of her diss track as bigoted Star Wars fans and alike. And we all know that she and others are basically labeling anyone who's critical of the Acolyte as bigots, including legitimate Star Wars fans and people who are not bigots. People who just genuinely have an issue with the show in one way or another, and they're being labeled as bigots. And so it, it really just tells you that her labeling of the haters as bigots really means nothing. It's anyone who is critical of her or the Acolyte. So when she drops this diss track, it really is on a lot of legitimate Star Wars fans who are being unfairly labeled. And on top of that, it just feeds the narrative that was fed over and over again by Acolyte fans saying, well, if you don't like a manless Stenberg or the show, simply don't watch. And that's what people did. It got canceled and that's the results. And now they're mad about it. And on top of that, maybe, maybe just maybe, her performance wasn't that great. Maybe it just didn't resonate with people. Can we allow someone like Amanda to have any accountability? Is she just uh, basically having this endless shield from criticism because she is a black woman? Like, it just seems very infantilizing and quite frankly offensive to, to try to claim that she's immune to criticism because of the color of her skin. She should be treated just like any other actress. Her performance should be judged just as it is. Nothing to do with her actual appearance or her race or anything like that. A lot of people really uh, summarize her performance in this show by the lack of expression. There's whole compilations of her just having this emotionless face. Maybe that didn't connect with people. Maybe it didn't make the big scenes feel that legitimate and genuine when it seems like it just wasn't that great. It seemed like someone who was being forced against their will to act out this performance. But anyways, of course, when someone is being criticized who is from a woke show or a woke show itself is being canceled, canceled, you know who's going to come to their defense, and that is the media. You can see Rolling Stone with another b -b -b banger right here saying, can the best of Star Wars survive the worst of its fans? Before Star Wars can have another successful show, some vocal parts of the fandom have to reckon with what they really want out of the franchise. These fans say they're fighting for Star Wars' future, but if their endless fantasy world can't accept stories that they don't recognize, some of these self-professed biggest fans in all of the worlds could be closing themselves off to any future at all. What is crystal clear is that before Star Wars can have another successful show, the loudest voices online need to realize the Star Wars they want to return to never existed in the first place. The Star Wars fans clamoring for a return to the originals aren't just talking nonsense. They're ruining their chance to see the franchise they love grow in any meaningful way. Star Wars is about a galaxy filled with endless choices, battles, and people trying to make a difference. The fans who are the loudest at the moment aren't just willfully ig ignoring Lucas's original vision. They're making their own worlds smaller in the process. That is crazy. So they are deflecting all blame of this entire thing from the creators of the Acolyte and instead pinning it on people who don't like it and don't want basically that level of quality to continue in the franchise. And we've seen other posts like this trying to essentially guilt trip the critics of the Acolyte and basically say, well, because you don't like the Acolyte, we're going to lose out on future stories. You can see this tweet saying, I wonder if the people uh, shitting on the Acolyte realize that if they keep this up, they may just discontinue generating new Star Wars content. Or you can see a wall of people making fun of it, basically saying like, okay, bring it on. And also, you know, this was objectively bad writing and had a political agenda. These are things that people didn't want. They included in the show. And guess what? It didn't do well. But instead of being taken as legitimate criticism, People are now coping and seething and saying, you're just not a real fan and you're hurting the franchise, which is the biggest cop out ever. But I think that's going to do it for today's discussion of Star Wars, the Acolyte. Keep in mind, I believe tomorrow we are getting the official release of Star Wars Outlaws. I was going to continue or uh, keep a section of this video for some of the related mess going on as we approach that release date. But I think it would be better served in a separate video, especially now we might as well wait for the official release to talk about that more. But yeah, tough time for the Star Wars IP this year. And I think 
Outlaws is going to be another disaster, but we know the Acolyte was a disaster, a proven one that was canceled after just one season, and the fans and even the lead actress are continuing to deflect blame from the creators onto random parties who decided not to watch that mess that they created. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time.